Alrighty, good morning internets. Uh, I'm just checking in again here to introduce and review this rather excellent piece of literature that just became available to me yesterday. Um, this is Christian Russo's, or Russo's uh, Hojo Jutsu, The Warrior Art of the Rope. Um, this is a book I've actually been keeping my eye on for quite some time now because, uh, well, it was originally released in Italian, and I had been eager to get a hold of it because I knew, or I was at least somewhat familiar with one of the uh, particular Hojujutsu Densho that are translated and discussed in this very publication. This book ended up being way bigger physically than I expected. Um, it's actually like coming in, well, I have the PDF here, which is what we're looking at on the screen. And uh, that comes in at 235 pages. Um, in addition to that, it only cost me about $20 Canadian. Um, so yeah, that's that's quite the um, that was quite the sweet deal. Um, I would. It's a sort of book like it is absolutely gorgeous. If I read correctly, I think the author is a graphic designer of some sort. Um, so I. Yeah, it, it shows. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous book. I would want this sitting on my shelf. I would be honored and excited to have this to have this sitting on my shelf. Not so fortunate because right now I'm actually trying to get rid of all my hard copies of, of various books and backing and back them up digitally so I own less stuff. Um making progress there. In any case, back on topic here, we got the 235 pages of Hojo Jutsu. Uh, this is just a massive compilation of um, of Christian Russo's um, well research on the subject, his research and obviously his practice. It's clear by the writing style that he is practiced at this. Um, so in any case, yeah, yesterday was actually kind of an exciting day for me in regards to that. As some of you guys have seen, uh, I did a review on Douglas Kent's um, rogue Hojo Jutsu. I still say Rogue Hojo Jutsu. I don't know. Must be the word Rogue. Stick to the Japanese, my friends. But in any case, um, yeah, so that landed on my doorstep. And then at the same time, I saw this post on Facebook for this. Now available in English, PDF copy. I'm like, oh god, PDF, that's even better. I don't have to own a hard copy. And I can just buy it and have it right away. I can start reading it right away. No waiting for Amazon or, uh, or these sorts of companies to deliver it to my door, like a certain Hojujutsu book that came yesterday. Just bundling up. Um, and, uh, yeah, so in any case, this popped up at the same time. I'm like, oh hell, I gotta like read for two days. But um, it's definitely been rewarding, that's for sure. Uh, in this particular case, yeah, it just landed on my lap. As soon as I saw it, I bought it. Money's not even good right now, and I just knew I had to get a hold of it because I knew what was in it. Um, yeah, and I could just ramble on forever about the actual, the absolute gorgeousness of this document. Um, wow. Just wow. It is gorgeous. Comparatively speaking to some others on the market right now, this is mind-blowing. Um, as you can see right here, the I got my cursor highlighter disabled here, but as you can see, it's uh, downright vivid. So in any case, uh, I'm not going to just willy-nilly flip through the book because you have to buy it. I'm not just going <laughs> to display it all on, on YouTube for you guys, but table of contents, or index in this case. Just got one more length rope to bundle up here. But So if we were just to go over this briefly here, starts off in a rather expansive history of Hoju Jutsu. Um, brought some things to the table I wasn't familiar with, and uh, and yeah, it's pretty spiffy. There's a lot of cool content there. Um, why the ninja keep being associated with Hoju Jutsu? I'm not really sure why. I kind of blame it on Fujita Seiko, who like tied the whole ninja thing into everything he did quite a bit. Um, so in any case, uh, his work's obviously referenced in here because that's like the, the premier encyclopedia of Hojujutsu. And um, 
And yeah, whatever. <laughs> I digress. So, it starts off the Archaic Age, like, very far back. Um, Mr. Russo goes into defining the different qualities of rope, the main rope, the quick rope, or the home Noah, and the, uh, um, wow, high Noah, speaking of which, high Noah, home Noah. Um, some of the qualities, preferences by different Ryuha, and these sorts of things. <clears throat> um, and it goes into the Edo period, how a lot of things have changed, and how it stayed the same, the discussion of the, um, the matter of whether or not uh, these traditions use knots seems everyone needs to account for that because someone out there spread this notion that there's no knots in Hojo Jutsu. Don't get me started. He actually writes some very excellent articles on the matter of guilt and shame in Japanese culture. That's uh, really influential. Um, uh, he elaborated a couple times on the matter of sort of um, well, a lot of different qualities. <laughs> I'm gonna not not give away everything here. I'm going to close Facebook over here because somebody doesn't know how to mind their own business. <clears throat> All right. Uh, yeah. So it goes through the the Archaic Age, uh, the Edo period, the Meiji period, um, the discussion of Taiho Jutsu and uh, like police arresting techniques of of the late Meiji era era, um, the Second World War, Reconstruction, uh, discusses a decent amount about Fujita Seiko and Nao Yumio, which is always relevant. Um, of course, uh, the current situation of Hoju Jutsu today, how it sort of ties into uh, Kimbaku and Shibari, the uh, uh, erotic rope bondage we find in Japan and has become exceptionally popular in the West as of late. And um, <clears throat> Um, actually, that particular article is something, like, as a practitioner of both arts myself, um, I can certainly uh, stand behind his description and essay on the subject of Kimbaku. Um, it's well-informed, though he does start off the article stating that it's better put in the, the mouth of, uh, of an expert on the subject, but is it was concise, it was thorough, and definitely fair. Um, I'm actually really impressed with that essay, and what I saw in the bibliography, he referenced uh, one of my favorite books on the subject, <sighs> The Beauty of Kimbaku, by uh, Master K, which is another exceptional piece of history. Moving along, chapter two. That was all chapter one, the history of chapter one, my god. Chapter two, the tools. So it goes into the materials of the rope, the size, the color, and esotericism. Um, that's actually some really cool stuff there. I'll elaborate on that shortly. God, I'm already at eight minutes. I need to learn how to be concise. The skein, which is not a term I've ever come across, but basically how to bundle rope like that. Um, the nature and styles of bundling and the reason for doing various ones. Uh, dogu. So yeah, that would be like uh, the kakute, the little spiky ring, um, hooks used in the rope. Uh, I'm not going to pull all those out because they're over there in the closet. <clears throat> uh, chapter 3, the schools, goes into uh, um, some of the methods of transmission, the densho, makimono, that sort of stuff. Um, and then a micro essay on the current uh, hojujutsu situation in Italy and how that sort of fits into the martial arts practice there. Uh, chapter 4, the foundations. So um, he elaborates quite nicely on the rules, like the the social context for using rope arresting techniques in Japan. Um, shintai is uh, kind of a fun one. Shintai basically means uh, mind and body or heart and body in this case. Um, I would say probably mind and body because it's discussing the psychophysical relationship of the practice of uh, rope arresting techniques. A lot of this for the people that are familiar with rope bondage, there is a lot of things that can go on in that. He elaborates on that rather nicely. Uh, ties it into theories of breathing and meditation and uh, so on and so forth, Men mental preparation. Uh, there's discussion of using hoju jutsu in combat. Uh, I won't elaborate on that because that's a good solid chunk of material too. Uh, and then he goes into the knots. There is many knots, loops, slips, binds, joint knots. It's 
a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. And, uh, and they elaborate between um, uh, Dencho illustrations and diagrams to actually sort of reverse engineer it. And special knots such as the rope chain, which is always one of my favorites. And then, yeah, wrapping the rope. Chapter 5, Hayanawa discusses like uh, handcuff knots, um, finger knots, and various techniques like that. Chapter 6, Honnawa, um, glimpses over that quite a bit, but um, uh, yeah, they end up covering a tremendous amount of that in what for me was the highlight of the book, the uh, Segoryu Nawasho, which is a document I've actually got um, three copies of, uh, three different copies of, and well, I'll talk about that later, but so, in any case, I do have some highlight points on here. Boom. Uh, page 44. Main rope and fast rope. So he has these nice little essays, roughly at the end of each chapter, I believe it is, um, where he elaborates on a particular detail, the difference between the main rope and the fast rope, discussion of using uh, the segeo, so the cord that's attached to the scabbard of a sword. <clears throat> um, or using one's belt, or, or obijime, um, which is a different type of belt. The tasuki, the, the length of cloth that's used to tie up those big, long, baggy sleeves on uh, on samurai. You can see that in some samurai movies. Uh, Koshinawa, so that's the, um, uh, the cord that's found, actually, right there. I don't have my highlighter, but um, right there in that upper right picture basically the thick cord you see in uh, on samurai armor or the heavier samurai armor so things like that um in any case long story short there's like these darkened pages well if i backtrack here there's light pages uh where it's the main content and then the darker pages is like sort of side essays um yeah 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 <clears throat> so all very impressive there uh, 59. Here is something um, fairly close to some of the research I've done. Oh, yeah. And these images aren't particularly easy to find or get a hold of uh, in high quality, or normally, let alone in high quality like this. Um, and with such vivid color and detail, I just, I saw this, I was like, wow, now I can actually see what I'm looking at. Cool. So these are the, the four torture methods of um, roughly around the Edo period in Japan. Uh, we've got uh, Muchuchi in the top right hand corner that's basically uh, striking and flogging with sticks and various forms of uh, um, uh, lashings. Uh, underneath, or well to the right of that, we have uh, tsuri, uh, yeah, tsuri Semi, Semi, which is like torture by suspension. Um, the individual is like basically elevated off the ground, usually by their wrists, depending on time period, nature of the crime uh, area, and the expertise of the actual person inflicting the torture. Um, it could be just by the wrists, it could be by a chest harness like we see in uh, Shibari nowadays. <clears throat> yeah, in any case, that's the thing that inspired Shibari's uh, uh, Tsuribaza suspension techniques. Bottom left hand corner, Ebi Semi. Seme, which is, or sorry, no, uh, that's Ishidaki, sorry, that's stone pressing. Basically, the individual is sitting on their knees against, like, corrugated wood, and then blocks of stone are actually pressed on top of their, their thighs to press them into that. It's rather excruciating and, and horrendous. I can't think of anyone that would truly enjoy that, and I know some people that are into that sort of thing. Um, so that's a rather intense one, in my opinion. Um, interestingly, the uh, Meiji University discusses the specific weight and uh, dimensions of each of those stone slabs, and there's like a process as to how frequently you would pile them on, or how many you're allowed to do before it's considered cruel and unusual by feudal Japanese standards. Apparently, that there was a standard of cruel and unusual. Uh, and then, bottom right hand corner is the Ebi Seme Shibari, or Ebi Seme. Um, Seme, keep mispronouncing that, <clears throat> and that's basically being tied cross-legged with your hands behind your back and your shins pulled to your face. 
it would be silly to say that everyone's flexible enough to do that in the first place, even for a culture of people that are used to sitting on the floor and, and theoretically have healthy hips. In this case, it ends up compressing everything from the circulatory system to the um, uh, la 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 the organs to you basically choke your organs of blood and oxygen. It's way more brutal than it looks. So, in any case, that ramble aside. Next point. Um, <clears throat> 85. Ah. So, um, there is a section here that discusses the various qualities of, um, uh, or the notion of using specific colored rope and uh, the direction the prisoner's facing and these sorts of things. And it goes into a little of the background behind that, which is um, kind of really easy to misunderstand and misinterpret. As someone that's translating uh, Fujita Seiko Zukai Hojo Jutsu myself, um, they do go into that a little bit, but not with very much explanation. Certainly no how and why, just a matter of this is done this way at one point. And uh, yeah, it doesn't really give a lot of background feed to it. Um, which is annoying, but um, so Mr. Russo here has actually elaborated on that and cross-referenced a considerable amount of things and frankly Im impressed me quite a bit. Um, it really sort of substantiates some of the theories around that and the Densho at the end of this book actually elaborates on it a little bit as well, which um, is really fortunate that we've got a primary source document elaborating on it the way it does to the extent it does. That's pretty cool stuff. <coughs> um, I just want to point that out because a lot of people write that right off as some kind of um, new agey thing or uh, or something that someone kind of just blew out of proportion when in fact it's basically just um, uh, misunderstood largely or misrepresented uh, pretty much across the board. Um, Ah, so there's a lot of cool uh, photographs of these of various ties found in Densho, or at least certain documents of transmission. Uh, there's always an emphasis in Hoji Jutsu that there's usually more diagrams than there is discussion or discourse, and um, and because of that, it ends up being glossed over. It's forced to be a kuden or oral transmission or taiden or something you feel yourself or is shown in person. And you basically need to learn it and understand it like that. Um, rather classical way of learning, not just reading about it and suddenly having all the lessons there on your on your plate just for you. <clears throat> so that is um, pretty cool. And there's another one from Sego Ryu, Nawa Dogu Um So these are um, similar ties to what we'll be looking at later on here. And then yet yeah, more examples. These are from, as we can see, um, block print style uh, printouts. So there was a certain standardization at this point, whereas prior to that we saw hand illustrated things like here and here. All right. So hand illustration, hand illustration with more detail, um, and then suddenly block print. It's like literally printed. <laughs> it's printed content. So yeah, at that point it'd be standardized, becoming more public uh, um, knowledge, and well, that's just how she goes. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, I'm not going to scroll through it all, but there is a considerable amount of discussion on various knots found in uh, in Hoju Jutsu and um, also safety for obvious reasons. It's not it's not easily treated as a um, recreational practice in the martial arts. It's not quite like doing solo kata. I mean, I've got my chair over here that I practice on. There's no rope on there now, which is a little bit unusual, but whatever. And um, so yeah, I'm not going to go through those chapters. It's um, although important, that is proprietary information to the document, and I'm just not here to exhibit the whole thing. Uh, one, seven. So this is the exciting stuff for me. This is the Nawa Show.
Noah show literally means rope book. Or um, if we were to apply some um, some nomenclature to it, it'd be like the book of rope. Think like how Yoda talks. <laughs> <clears throat> um, and interestingly, we have here in the bottom left hand corner a particular character in many Densho and Makimoto collections. This is usually the fifth character. So it'd be Ichini Sanchi and this guy. So this implies to me that this is a fifth book in a series. Not on rope arresting on Vedic, but of the tradition Sego Ryu, which is not exclusively uh, a rope arresting tradition. It, uh, according to Serge Mole, it has a considerable amount of other content. Uh, uh, I forget the name of the style. I don't think it was Koshimawari uh, branch of practices. It was. Uh... Yeah, well. <clears throat> not the point of this video. Stay on topic. Boom, boom, boom. So, yeah. Now, a show from the Sego Ryu. That's pretty exciting stuff. This document here, according to. And here somewhere is dated 1698. <coughs> so that's super cool. That's uh, that's going back considerably, um, and yeah, it's just super cool. 192. This is an interesting page here that I wanted to bring attention to. Uh, this discuss discusses quite a few different uh, qualities. <coughs> One of them is Chinawa, where is it now? Mm, oh, I don't know the cursor turned on here. So in any case, uh, as it should be able to be seen on the screen here, uh, it mentions Chinawa, basically rope reddened by blood. Um, nowadays in Shibari and Kimbaku, we do various things to condition the rope using uh, things like tsubaki oil, um, beeswax, etc., etc., etc. We go through a lot of stuff. This rope isn't shelf bought and ready. <laughs> um, so that's kind of interesting. We can see in the second column to the left, uh, from the left side, there's a little illustration that shows a sort of rope braiding because it's discussing um, like the density and, and qualities of the rope preferred for this sort of thing for the Honawa or the Honshiki Nawa. Um, of course, discussion of length and whatnot. I believe that's on the next page or the prior page. I can't recall, but um, but yeah. So what's interesting here is, like I mentioned earlier, I've got uh, access to three different copies of this thing. I've got this one. I've got one that's, I believe, roughly 100 years later, and uh, and there's a copy found in Fuji uh, Seiko's uh, publication on Hojujutsu. Of these, it gets quite interesting in that. Uh, things are lost throughout the ages, and nothing is added, um, except for the uh, the second one. Uh, the second one, certain things are added that I find being popular in various uh, uh, various other dencho and makimono of the time period, usually discussing esotericism or uh, um, ba -ba -ba, or Kyushu diagrams, like for example. Uh, this document here doesn't have a diagram for pressure points in Kyusho. The next iteration that I have of this does. It was explicitly added, but then omitted in the third generation, which means that the transcriber there was adding to it certain collections of knowledge um, that I find to be cross-referenceable to other content in uh, other densho around the same time period. Um, I don't know why, but I'm personally aggravated by this because it's like generic information being added to a tradition. It's, it's It gets redundant at that point. Usually Kyushu uh, illustrations of uh, the Gorin, the Shinto Gorin, um, or the five stage sort of uh, statue that represents the five elements, um, or the five phases, I should say. Um, and yeah, so it's interesting there. Another thing we find is that here you can see that braid of uh, of rope there, and the next document I'm not going to pull it out right now, but in the next document, it's uh, oh heck, there we go. Yes, sir. Uh. 
there's my printout of the next one. A little bit more explicit. Straight up says Sego Ryu uh Sego Ryu Naomaki. Now, one of the things we find in this is this one is also handwritten, uh, which is super cool. But the content is in a different order, it gets right into Hayanawa, whereas in this bug in the older iteration, it's later on in the book. Um, but uh, also, it jumps right into the Han Noah ties. And, and, and. Mm. The elegance and quality of description of the, of the rope braid here is lesser, I find. Um, upon cross-referencing this further as well, uh, what we can actually see in the translations is that here in this particular document, it um, there is a certain flavor to the uh, uh, to the writing style that implies that the author was a practitioner of this, probably put it into practice at some point, um, and he's writing from personal experience. Um, in this case, exceptional personal experience, based on the level of depth of detail that he goes into this. Yet at the same time, it's not dry like what we read in Fujita Seiko's publications and other encyclopedic type texts, where that are basically uh, Zuihitsu, a collection of information. <clears throat> this is this is a den show. This is for the purpose of transmitting to someone uh, knowledge. Uh, I believe it was earlier in this book. It was discussed that this publication would have been a documentation of kuden, so oral teachings, um, possibly in an attempt to make sure it doesn't just die off and go away. Um, another thing too, if I were to. I'm not going to cherry pick it too much, but the quality of the illustrations are also uh, much reduced. So it shows a certain sloppiness by the hand. Here, uh, there is a um, an expression of literacy and education by the author. Here, it's sloppier. Specifically sloppier, like you find in some ninja documents where the author wasn't necessarily highly educated. Uh, well, I mean, that's generalization to an extreme, but uh, you've got individuals whose writing style is explicitly sloppy, almost childish, compared to this, which is clear that is bordering on cursive in some cases, as we see on the far left-hand side here. <clears throat> so... Accordingly, I think it's just really cool to point out that clearly the author was a practitioner and he took it seriously and deeply. Not what we find in Fujita Seiko's work, which in all likeliness he probably didn't practice Hojo Jitsu all that much. Uh, if I understand correctly, based on the history of uh, the Zukai Hojo Jitsu, it was mostly a collection of his father's documents on the subject, compiled and published. So, that's a thing. Uh, 95. Boom, boom, boom. I keep rambling on and on like this is about me and not the book. Esoterica. Mm. Also, there are some things, too, you can see side by side. The artistic expression found here compared to here. One's, uh, one's more thorough, more detailed. There's no confusion in the overlaps. The other one is sloppier and kind of almost rushed without the artistic proficiency to make it come out in a nice way. But um, here I was also talking about how the there's discussion of colors and direction and various things. Well, this is one of the things that they use in this tradition to discuss the anatomy of a tie. So I thought that was cool and worth mentioning. Um, almost to the end here. This next one is actually kind of cool. This is a discussion of uh, arresting using one's bowstring. So this is actually an ongoing debate I have with a friend of mine in regards to the use of the bowstring. Um, because I've dealt with other documents that discuss what to, what to do with your bow when, uh, when you run out of arrows or when your bow is damaged or these sorts of things. There's one document that discusses uh, um, quick firing your arrows and then when you run out you use your bow in a particular way of melee. 
so close combat using your bow. Um, in which case, why not? Ultimately, why not? Uh, but yeah, here it's actually showing a rope wrestling technique using bowstring, which I thought was that was cool. I never noticed it until this publication. I've been through this uh, document quite enough times to think that I'd be able to pick it up. But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool beans. Let's see. Just trying to see if I've got the other iteration by hand. Oh yeah, like I was saying, the generic um, the generic content I found added in later ones looks a lot like this. But Esoterica, Kyushu, uh, la 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 la, more Kyushu, and this, which I've seen a number of documents, including republished um, texts from Fujita Seiko on the subject of a ninjutsu and various others. So, yeah. And as we saw, mm -mm -mm, this shows the extent to the publicity around classical and modern. Uh, oops. Wrong one. My bad. 187. Page 187. Turn to page 187, boys and girls. There. Now a show. Straight up. Now a show. Doesn't mention Sego Ryu. Doesn't mention any of these things from the front. It's a book on rope. It was to be given to a successor in a tradition. They know what tradition it is. That's not important. This clearly documented explicitly so, which emphasizes a certain publication uh, grade of it, or publicity to it. <clears throat> so that's a thing, um, an interesting thing. And again, uh, one of the chapters in Fujita Seiko's Zukai Hojo Jutsu discusses exactly this content and this content. Um, I haven't done a proper analysis between the three copies I have there, but it's interesting that they're almost 100 years apart, and you can see the, the transgressions. Oh yeah, and that illustration of the rope in the diagram, uh, at one point when they're discussing qualities of the rope, that's omitted completely in Fujita Seiko's text. It's literally a gap in the text. Writing, 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 gap. Writing, writing, writing. Why? I don't know. They had the capacity to, to insert these things. After all, for, in other parts of Fujita Seiko's work, um, it shows, it's discussing a loop, uh, a heavy Gucci, um, and it like literally writing, 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 shows a loop with a little knot, writing. Why? I don't know. In any case, back on subject, 33 minutes into this poor thing, that was um, one of the more influential texts that I've come across in English on the subject of Hojo Jutsu and related rope arresting arts. Um, you can't really do better for the price you're getting it at. The PDF format that I've only seen so far is uh, um, exceptional. It's not a huge document. You're not gonna um, you're not gonna fill your iPad with it. It's small. I think it was like 15 megabytes. Um, for 235 high definition pages like you see here with vivid vivid color I don't know if my my uh, screen capture software is quite showing it to the extent that I get to look at it here but the monitor I'm running it on here on my big screen is not known for vivid colors this looks damn nice um, the content is solid it's obviously written from both personal experience and a considerable amount of research um, oh yeah one of the things here Oops. And all the way. Oh, yeah, and there's the backing. There's the ISBN number. Get your own copy. Um, where's that going here? Oh, yeah. Rather extensive bibliography. This one almost doubles what uh, Douglas Kent had in his not poking fingers here. Um, for one thing, the two books have completely different purposes. This one's dedicated to a tradition. Douglas Kent is dedicated to what interests him, um, and frankly interests me, but interests him. 
Like that was the priority. So in any case, boom, extensive bibliography. Um, I was actually really happy to see some of these in here. Um, Serge Moles, some, one of my favorite authors in his research. Uh, I've got his uh, la, 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 classical fighting arts of Japan sitting over here. <clears throat> um, and then Master K there up, uh, third line from the top on the beauty of Kimbaku. That is that book I showed earlier, second and none on the subject of Kimbaku. Um, some wonderful stuff here. So in any case, awesome stuff. I highly recommend it if you're interested in uh, rope arresting techniques, if you're interested in rope bondage, if you're interested in martial arts, if you're interested in history, and if you're interested in personal practice. This is uh, an exceptional uh, book. I just I love it. I'm going to be rereading parts of it for a while, and I'm going to be practicing these techniques in particular.